Returning to our story, after Lucretia's accident, State Farm Insurance used a medical report called a paper review to justify denying payment of almost all her medical expenses. Most major insurance companies now use these reviews. They can help identify phony medical claims. That's a major problem in the industry. But is that all there is to it? Once again, John Larson. The company that wrote Lucretia's medical report, CMR, is just one of about 200 paper review companies State Farm has used. Over the last 15 years, CMR has produced 27,000 reports about accident victims from all over the country, not only for State Farm, but also for many of the nation's other leading insurance companies. So the question of who's really behind these reviews is vital. I think on one occasion we even employed a journalist. Bill Marvin is CMR's president. He told us that in the mid-90s, non-medical people often did research and write medical reports, but that doctors always checked them to make sure the reports were accurate. The reports when they were issued were the opinions of the doctors uh, who, who signed them. But were they? Dateline found a number of confidential sources who told us otherwise. There was really not much of a review going on from the physician's point of view. This CMR insider was so afraid of reprisals he would only speak if we disguised him. He told us he saw doctors at CMR sign stacks of reports while barely reviewing the records. How many reports would a doctor look at and sign in maybe an hour? Um, anywhere between 30 to 50. 50 reports in one hour? In one hour. So it was more like an autograph session? It's exactly what it was. Sources told us some doctors did diligently review reports, yet this man and others told us frequently the reports were then changed without the doctor's knowledge and then sent on to insurance companies like State Farm. Bill Marvin would feel free to go in and just make a change to the report. We witnessed it every day. Did you ever change reports after a doctor had signed them? No, I don't believe so. Think about that. Never? Not to my recollection. But what Marvin didn't know was that we had tracked down someone else who had boxes of documents nearly forgotten in a garage. This, here's a case. In the boxes, we found rough drafts of medical reviews, reviews sent to Bill Marvin after doctors had already signed them, in this case, a Dr. Viglotti. Why would they send you a report that Viglotti has already reviewed and signed? I don't know. If you know the answer, please, please enlighten me. I, I, I don't know. We did know the answer. Okay. This is the same case. Because we had a you. later draft of the same review. It showed Marvin had changed the doctor's report. More than 30 changes in his handwriting. Most were stylistic, but some made things better for State Farm and worse for the accident victim. For example, the doctor had written about the unlikelihood of a back injury. Marvin had crossed that out and changed it to extremely unlikely. Why would you be saying this after a doctor has already signed off on it? By the way, did you go to medical school? No. So we asked him again, why did he why? change the doctor's report? Because I was probably the most experienced person in the company at that point in time in terms of looking at a, a uh, the wide assortment of the type of cases that would come in from the insurance companies. But Marvin, who at first had said he never changed doctor's reports, then said if he did, he would always run the changes by the doctor. But did he? Dateline found the doctor and showed him the changes. All these changes, are these your notes? No, they're not. Dr. Joseph Viglotti, a well-respected, Harvard-educated doctor, worked for CMR in 1993 and 94. If that happened, that happened without your knowledge? Absolutely. I did not authorize it. When I finished the report and my signature was on it, that was it. No more changes were to be made. We showed this to Dr. Viglotti, and he said it's obvious to him that somebody's changing his medical opinion after he's signed it, and he doesn't like it. I, I guess it depends on, on your perspective. Um, Under what perspective would this be the right thing to do? Yeah. 
Show me in there what was changed medically, please. So we showed him his changes again. You know, the process was, was not entirely uh, paint by the numbers. Maybe the president of the company shouldn't be involved in, in the report writing process at all, which maybe, maybe the I'm not anymore. Maybe the president of the company, who's not a doctor, should not be rewriting reports after the doctor's already signed them. Or maybe the president of the company and the doctors needed to be spending a little bit more time together. So why would Marvin change reports? Reports insurance companies like State Farm were using to help analyze medical costs. The answer may lie in what was usually in the reports, what they said. We were not in the process or in the business of healing. We were in the process of limiting. Remember Edwin Newton, the journalist who wrote so-called doctor's reports for CMR? He told us the reports were not at all what State Farm was saying they were, fair and objective, but in fact were secretly biased, written to favor the insurance companies. We were never told exactly, deny care. You're paid to deny care. We were never told that. But the information we had to work with to come up with a conclusion was slanted in that way. Dateline obtained copies of the 160 stock computer paragraphs given to CMR case writers like Newton. And we were surprised to discover almost every single paragraph cut or limited medical care. It's almost like you were, your job was to come up with the excuse. The excuse. We were the excuse. Dateline also found documents that suggest CMR case writers were taught to downplay injuries, even going so far as to avoid the word. Watch the word injury because it's inflammatory. On another document, use discomfort as a substitute for pain. And here, an employee suggests leaving out medical information that could be helpful to the accident victim. Her bones were possibly more brittle, and we don't want to point this out. And we don't want to point this out. Should that be on here? No. Would that be objective if anybody in your company was thinking like that? As, as I indicated, John, I've never seen that note. Okay, I've never been asked about that note. Because the way this appears is somebody had a bias here. Somebody said, let's not point out a medical reality. Let's not mention that. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like to me, too. And there was more. Dateline legally followed a trail of electronic footprints. We learned that CMR computer files had been erased, but we found backups. We collected 39 computer disks from a number of sources. Some were encrypted, electronically locked, so no one could read them. But Dateline cracked the codes and opened the files. Altogether, we examined thousands of memos and documents, and something caught our attention. It was a reference to a sophisticated computer database. CMR claimed it could predict the likelihood of an injury in a specific accident by comparing it to thousands of other accidents. CMR called it crash data. We were told it was used to recommend cutting care on up to 100 cases sent to State Farm. Sounds impressive. But there's just one problem. Crash data never really existed. It was a big joke down the hallways of CMR. A joke? A joke. We laughed. We couldn't believe that people were buying a false piece of paper. Marvin told us he wasn't sure if crash data had ever been cited in a CMR report. I don't know. But it was. Dateline found these CMR reports purchased by State Farm quoting crash data as a reason to deny coverage. In fact, Dateline found this State Farm letter sent to managers in the Northwest promoting CMR's new review service. The letter trumpets crash data's fast turnaround time and low cost. It even included order forms. So we took what we had learned to State Farm, which was by far CMR's biggest customer to see if it had any idea that thousands of paper reviews it used to settle accident claims included reports written by non-medical people, reports slanted against accident victims, and some which included a bogus database. The story you're telling is one that I'm not very happy with and is not State Farm and not the way we do business.
Senior Vice President Jack North told us State Farm 2 was shocked by CMR's behavior. This was the first time State Farm acknowledged publicly it knew there were problems at CMR. We've learned some things about CMR that disappoint us, and when we learn uh, about that, we quit doing business with them. So if what happened at CMR was just a case of one small paper review company deceiving the nation's largest insurance carrier, then our story would likely end here. But it doesn't. In a moment, you'll meet this man.